Hi guys, and welcome to another episode. Today I have the honor and the pleasure of interviewing somebody who I've actually been wanting to interview for a long time. And a lot of that has to do actually with a lot of different reasons. Um, Jillian Godsell is, of course, a member of the board on EOS Dublin. But not only that, Jillian is kind of like a true crypto journalist with some really, really impressive writing skills. Um, and has interviewed some really prolific people kind of in the cryptocurrency space. So Jillian, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking a few moments to chat with me today. It's been a, it's been a while in the making, of course, you being in Dublin, me being in Costa Rica, but it's just great to be able to sit down and have a chat with you. Well, thank you, because you're the one of the most polite people I've ever met. <laughs> 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 yeah, great. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> nothing, nothing can upset you, I think. Yeah, well, I think... It's, it's so funny because you just have to realize that at the end of the day, like, I mean, of course, we both know I do like a lot of community management and community outreach. And uh, at the end of the day, um, as long as you're kind of, you conduct yourself with as much integrity as you possibly can, like nothing else really matters. You just have to do you. And some, some people, but it comes out in space. Yeah. Space. I love because you're never cross, like you're never, you know, I might get something wrong, whatever. And you go, no, it's just something, oh, sorry. You go, no, it's great. <laughs> so you, you go, wonderful energy and, um, um, uh, just joy, joy. I think is the word for it. I think I'm just shocked and happy to be here. Does that make sense to you? Like I'm just, um, I'm still kind of in that weird off phase where it's like this is what I do for this is what I do for a living, and to me that's like one of the most beautiful things. So I'm just really, I wake up. I, we both work really, really hard, but I wake up every day grateful, and I think gratitude has a lot to do with that. Yes. So, yeah, yes. no. I do appreciate it. I, I wanted to kind of kick it off with something that I read that really kind of um, brought me into you. Of course, we met when you interviewed Tribe, and I kind of have some Irish heritage in my blood, so I've been watching EOS Dublin for a long time, and kind of everything culminated. And um, we got to chatting, and then, of course, you're doing some posts on Tribe. But when I really kind of – the aha moment where I was like, I need to get Jillian on an interview was when I kind of read about your first experience coming into the cryptocurrency space and how it kind of unfolded. You wrote a really, really interesting um, blog article about that. Are you interested in kind of sharing that story? Yes, yes. I mean, the short version, the very long version, right? But the short version was that I had a very traditional upbringing, you know, and I went to school. Obviously, I went to Trinity College in Dublin. I got hired on the milk ground to work for J.P. Morgan in London, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And I met my dead husband. We went to Australia and Singapore. I worked there in FinTech or high-tech PR, as it was called back in the day. Um, and then I came back to Ireland, and I worked again in FinTech. I was PRO for, for companies. I set up my own PR company again. And then um, went down the country, bought a big house, had my two children that stage, uh, had a pony, which I shared, and I was going to live happily ever after. So I didn't. <laughs> I woke up one morning, it's all my fault, and I went, oh my goodness, I'm not happy. So... Um, the marriage, we were like not compatible then. I think we'd been unhappy for a while, whatever. But we lived all over the world. We didn't even notice it. You know, you, you, can, you live in strange places. It's very hard to know if you're happy or not. Yeah. So anyway, the marriage, the divorce happened, very tough. Uh, and then we had bought a house, a big, nice big manor house. And uh, this is the, this is the short version. I promise you, get there. Right? <laughs> we have a manor house, and it was worth about one point one at one stage, whatever. But we're selling it as part of the divorce. It was a big house. We're selling it as part of the divorce. But we hit the crash at the same time. So I couldn't, I hit divorce and recession at the same time. It was just a double whammy, it was too much. And so the house price was crashing along with the rest of our Ireland. Um, and my ex went back to the UK, we borrowed money on the house, and he went bankrupt in the UK and gave all the debt to myself and our two children. That was my divorce present. Woo! And um, so then what did I do? I thought I'll have to sell the house. So I moved out to a cottage nearby with my kids. And then um, I made a video to sell us. It went viral. I went viral. I was crazy. And I became the face of austerity in Ireland for in 2011 and 2012. Um, and around that time, too, as well, this, because your, your viewers will understand the story starting to make some sort of sense because, you know, the banks were doing this narrative about people gaming the system and use terms like moral hazard and a lot of suicides happening in Ireland, but especially men couldn't pay the mortgage anymore and people were, you know, the vulture phones were coming. It was just a lot of stuff happening. And I, so I, got, I, to get, I was a, I'm a very slow burner, I think. Like I, mean, I became an accidental activist. Because I went, hang on, this is not right. You know, I'm losing everything here, but there's nothing wrong. So in the end, I got a cash offer to buy the house, but it was below the mortgage. So the banks refused consent to sell. They preferred to repossess the home, and they sold it the following year. They, they had a cash offer of 500000 they, they sold it for 165000 the following year. A big, like, you know, 5,000 square foot house. 
made no sense. At this stage, I had no assets, so I became the first female bankrupt under the new laws, bankruptcy laws. And at this stage, I'm going, I'm getting mad. <laughs> you know, it takes me a while, but I'm definitely getting mad. And everybody knew people who committed suicide because of financial, you know, failure and, and, and stress and shame. So I discovered that as a bankrupt, I wasn't allowed to run for public office. And I went, mm, excuse me, I've done nothing wrong. I committed no crime, but it's painful, but I'm not, you know. So um, I brought the government to the High Court, first of all, to argue that my constitutional rights have been infringed because as a bankrupt, I wasn't allowed to run for public office. And then I went over to the High Court, Supreme Court and I was successful and I was allowed to run for public office. So then I have to run for public office, <laughs> as you do. So that was 2014 and I ran in the European parliamentary elections in Ireland side and I had a blast, like six weeks, no money, no party. I, my car broke down, so a friend lent me a little I don't know, like a Morris Minor, like Mr. Bean, that English comedian, going all around the countryside. And I got 11,500 votes, and that was grand, and that was fine. I didn't get elected. And then, this is, that was the short version, by the way, and then how did I get to blockchain? The year following that, like, well, we were evicted from our rented accommodation then, and that was even tougher. Like, you know, Oscar Wilde says that to lose one parent is, is unfortunate, to lose two smacks of carelessness. I mean, how did this happen? And, and I ended up, the kids, I got them in a little cottage because they were kind of grown up. Uh, they were 18 and 21, and I ended up couch surfing with a friend. And um, I was, you know, just, was, oh, this is very, very tough. And I had a tough year where I, I thought, my life's kind of over now. Do you know what I mean? I kind of thought, that's it. I've had a bit of excitement. I've done the European parliamentary thing. I've, I went a bit viral. I've been on all Al Jazeera and Russia Today. And I think, look, my life's kind of over. And then, and then a year and a half ago, I met blockchain. I went, oh, mama, I've come home. And I mean, we, people who watch this, they're going to know why, obviously. It's just, it's a whole disintermediary, disruptive, new thing. I call it unthinking the world. I just love blockchain for what it can do. I mean, like, I'm not anti-bank, bank, bank. You know, banks have served a function back in the day. Now they don't. They don't look after their clients. They're, you know, they're, they, they kill people, basically. Um, they, they fractionalize all the money. It's, it doesn't, it makes, if you actually looked at a bank and you said, that makes no sense. And countries do that things like quantitative easing. It's like counterfeiting. You know, how can we live in a world like this? It's not backed by the gold standard or anything. Not backed by anything. So nope. I'm like going, wow, blockchain makes sense. It's a lot more sense than the current world. And the other thing that I love about it too as well is that there's so many people in blockchain that want to make the world a better place. That is beautiful. And as ordinary people can earn an income and change the world at the same time. How exciting is that? So that's how I met blockchain. I, I love it because it, it speaks to um, it speaks to a lot of different things. It speaks to the journey of you know, kind of like the single mother thrown into an uncompromising position, and then you know, really just doing something epic. You know what I mean? Just reinventing yourself through the through the exploration of blockchain, and it's um, you know, it's it's good to see it's good to see women in blockchain, but it's good to see women in blockchain who are doing well and interviewing some really high profile people and just really making their mark. You know what I mean? Um, I think we need to see more of that. And uh, it's just, I love the story and I can also kind of appreciate, you know, the, the opportunity side of it because I have, I think a similar story in the sense that um, blockchain has really allowed me to participate in something that I really love um, and then kind of create a little career out of it along the way. I think people don't realize the amount of opportunities that are in such a changing world and that you, you know, you don't necessarily, you don't have to be a banker. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to, you know, everybody's kind of got something to contribute. And if you give value, ultimately there's a chance for you to kind of receive some value. So I just, when I read that story, I thought it was beautiful and I appreciated it. And yeah, no, it was great. I interviewed a woman today, Katie Roman, who you might know, who's a community manager with EOS Asia. Yeah. And a lovely woman. Oh, my God. She's so bubbly and you know, enthusiastic and passionate. But do you know one thing that came out of the interview? She just kept on saying, I'm only a stay-at-home mom. And by the end, we're kind of going, hang on. Okay, you're a stay-at-home mom, which is a very important function. Of course it is. And mo I mean, modern world, people often don't get to do it because they have to go out and work, whatever. Very important. But isn't it amazing that she, as a stay-at-home mom, can earn a living from being the community manager, she actually paid for what she's doing, yeah. and to make a difference. Isn't that amazing? You don't, you don't have to be any more, to make a difference in the world, it's not the preserve of the mad scientists or the inventors, although they all play their part too, but ordinary people like you and me to make a difference. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's exciting. It really is, and for anybody who doubts that, um, where I, you know, me in particular, I like I'm proof. 
I'm just, uh, it's been, it's been a really interesting ride and I know things are just warming up. So I'm on, as I said, that's why I wake up happy. That's why I wake up grateful. And that's why I try to maintain that attitude. Um, you do, you do. It comes across in all your correspondence. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to talk about EOS Dublin a little bit, but I just like one thing that I also kind of drew me to you is you've really done a lot of things that I think like ultimately someday I would love to do. And that includes some really high profile interviews. So I wanted to, I, I went on a cattle drive in Montana. You should do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Throwing that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to kind of just ask you a quick question. Like, what would you say? And I know this is going to be difficult. I don't want you to play favorites or anything like that, but maybe give me kind of the two most impactful or interesting interviews that you've done to date. Do you know what I find? This is kind of a weird answer. The one I did last, because it, it's you know, when you interview someone and then you write it up, you're so engrossed in them. And you, you, you take bits away, like one of the most recent ones I did was with Thomas Cox. And yeah. that's amazing. That man, well, he's a genius. He's absolutely a genius. And he, has, he knows so much about so many things. He calls himself a generalist. He is so smart at everything. It's not, he's, he's not a generalist at all. He says, oh, I'm a jack of all trades and master of none. Oh, my God, I learned so much. My head hurt. I have, I have, to, I have to stop him and say, can you explain that? What does that mean? What is that when it's at home, you know? So... In, in one hand, the person that I've spoken to most recently, because they're very much in my in my mind, but he would stand out. The other person would stand out for me as well. Um, very smart man was CZ from Binance. Yes. That was a very interesting one. And less because, like, uh, Thomas Cox was inspirational. He had so much things to say. I really identify with a lot of what he said. He was such a smart man. And CZ was, was less that he was being inspirational, very knowledgeable very smart, very, a very, and it was a more a traditional business interview. He's a, a traditional businessman. But what he's done, oh my goodness, I feel very privileged to have spent half an hour on the phone to him and then, you know, written up, that, that would be, but actually everybody I've interviewed, no one, no one as yet has, has disappointed me, especially in the new long form articles that I'm doing, or the EOS podcast. Yes. They're, they're really connecting. They're really, they're, I'm, I'm, I know you think you have the best job in the world, but actually I've got the best job in the world to interview amazing people, like just to learn so much the whole time. Yeah, you, you really have. And I, um, I, I do share the, I do share your feelings about Thomas Cox. I have him on almost on a weekly basis, uh, a little bit less more. So I just interviewed him a couple of days ago and um, yeah, he's a really, really smart guy. And for a smart guy, he's also just a, a thousand times more approachable and down to earth than I think um, people really give him credit for, which really shines yeah. through in some of the conversations that we have. I often feel, as I feel right now, as if I'm sitting in a room and it's, it's just him and I, um, which I guess essentially we are, but of course there's a little bit of an audience, um, albeit a humble one that watches. So um, big fan of Thomas Cox as well. And, um, and I, yeah, CZ from Binance, I mean, undeniable, some of the things that that, that person has done. So. Smart, smart man, you know, just, and he, he's more traditional in terms of the, the business interview that I, that I did with him, but just smart. And, I was like, wow. and, then, and then I think afterwards, wow, how lucky am I to have had access to him? Yeah. And that's because we're in this new industry. I mean, if I wanted to go for the head honcho in, I don't know, Volkswagen or Pepsi, whatever, I wouldn't get near them. I'd have to be like the editor of the, of the New York Times. But this industry, because it's so new, people make themselves available. And that, that is another great, great um, privilege to speak to all these people. And I hope in time come, that won't go away. Hopefully that sort of open spirit will stay that. I don't know. But right now, it's the right time to be a journalist in blockchain is right now at the moment because people are accessible. It, it really is. I was actually blown away the first time I asked uh, Thomas for an interview and he was, it's instant yes. And some of the, I mean, I, you know what? It's really not, it's really not hard to, to, as you said, interview some of the people who are really making changes in the space. And it's, it's always, I, I often ask and I'm often surprised when I get the yes. I'm, I, sh I should. I mean, I interviewed somebody recently and he was saying in his youth, he hung out with um, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. I'm like, wow. You know, but we're hanging out with the Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, but on blockchain world. So when I'm a granny, I'll, my grandkids will say, wow, granny, you are amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so true. I think, um, as you said, the world, it's just so new right now. And there's, there is compared to the amount of things that are going on there, there's just not enough journalism in the space. It's, I'm always blown away by some of the opportunities that are presented simply from, uh, talking to different people. And, and it's been, it's been really good to me as I know it's been great to you. What do you think kind of the most fascinating thing about the cryptocurrency space from a socioeconomic 
kind of viewpoint might be, and you did already discuss a little bit of this. Yeah, do you know what, for me, is I mentioned earlier, being an ordinary person can change the world, right, which sounds it's a bit plain, but you can't. The other thing that's so exciting for me is we know every year at Davos, Oxfam uh, publishes its annual report where it talks about the 1% of the world's population, only 80% Oxfam did well. You know, so that it's like this, uh, the middle class don't exist anymore, the, uh, the lower socioeconomic classes are like below the line, it's crazy. This is the first time that people, companies, groups, communities can create wealth from nothing more than their enthusiasm and ideas. That is so powerful because up until now it's been the preserve of the privileged and the very rich. You've got a trust fund, you can make money. If you have money, you'll make money. But if you're an ordinary person, the climb from ordinary person up to um, you know, successful person is very tough, extremely tough, and only a few make it. But now, that, that's the biggest thing, and it goes so you could be somebody living in Lagos or somebody living in, in the depths of Kerry, I don't know, in Ireland, but, and have maybe, you know, come from a broken background, a single parent, not much education, you know, not much money. But if you have an idea or, or, or even just join, you don't have to have the idea, just you can join this industry and you can become successful. And everybody, the other thing too is what I love about this too as well, it's a whole rethinking of capitalism. Because old capitalism, which is not working, it's all about the, the shareholder value, you know, the bottom line, the dollar. And it's horrible because it's based on the principle of scarcity. So it's all dog eat dog and you have a rubber. Whereas if you turn it on its head and you say, wow, well, if I'm a company and I look after my employees and I make good product and I look after my customers and I'm active in my community, maybe I, I help with charities in my area, whatever, sector, you know, and we're all, we're all making money, you know, we're all making money, but not like the CEO is not making you know, 10, 20 times that of a secretary or the cleaner or whatever, there's, a, there's a, a, a break in how much people can earn. And it's all based on the abundance theory. That, and, there is, and, that, and people say, oh, you've been hippy-dippy again, Joe. Except, i give you the one example is, there is enough food in this world to feed everybody. There is abundance. We don't do it. People starve and people get obese. But there is enough food. So I'm not, it's, it's not me having a fairy tales. If we could figure out, figure out how to distribute food more effectively would be the world yeah a lot that's you're bang on and i totally agree with you um and and you know i always kind of laugh at the people who are uh talk about cryptocurrency and say you can't just make money <laughs> that's one of the most you know that's one of the most ironic um mm. responses that i get because i think a lot of people are naive to the way that a lot of currencies are backed these days but we won't we won't go too far into that so um <laughs> uh, I think let's talk about EOS Dublin a little bit. So I've had my eyes, you know, kind of having an Irish heritage and all Canadians say this, well, I'm from, I'm Irish or I'm the, the truth of the matter is Canada is only, you know, a couple hundred years old. So we still relate to kind of where our parents came from. Canada has experienced an influx of Irish people in the last 10 years. There's more Irish in Canada than anywhere else in the world. I think that, I mean, my daughter went there for the J1 two, two summers ago, but uh, I mean, there's more people have gone to Canada. I think it's because your your prime minister is very cute. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell him. <laughs> Personally. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about kind of your role at EOS Dublin? Like what is EOS Dublin all about? And um, and just kind oh, of they're amazing guys, amazing guys. And first of all, I have to say, you know, I spoke to Sharif earlier today. I said, Sharif, I'm gonna have you asked this question. What did I say? And he was very interesting. He said, I mean, EOS Dublin, is an, they're amazing. It's run by Sharif and Sam. And there's also some marketing guys over in the States, Isaac and Jessica. And a few people around the place too, myself. But he said, the technology is there. That's a given. Yeah, yeah. That's a given. But the reason why Ireland is important uh, and EOS Dublin is important as block producer is that it's, it's geographically places. It's geopolitical spacing is very important because we're now going to be the, after Brexit, we're going to be the only native speaking English uh, native English, English speaking country in the EU. We're at the very edge of Europe. We're only hop, skip, and a jump over to America. So if everything goes down in China, Ireland's going to be pretty safe. And we, we're a safe environment. So there's, there's a lot of reasons why Ireland is safe just from a, a geopolitical perspective. Huge. Plus, also, what's really handy, what Ireland did very well in the last, oh, I don't know, the last 20 years, we attracted all the top fintechs to Dublin. That's like, so nine out of ten of the top is Airbnb and Facebook and Twitter and, and PayPal and you name it. They're all in Dublin. And that is, and some of them around the country too as well. So that means we've got a very strong uh, community, uh, a tech community. The other thing too as well, the Irish are very good at, we're very good at being mavericks. You know, we're not, um, 
we're not, you know, we're not so good in rules and regulations. You know, the English were much more strict. That's why we didn't get on so well for so many years. But what it makes, and also we're very good writers, okay? Uh, and uh, most of the top English English writers would be Irish, if you like, you know, Yeats and Wilde, and uh, there's loads and loads and loads of them. But, and, and some people think that they are actually, um, you know, English, they're not this English speaking. But that same talent for writing, we have it in software, because software and, and technology, it's a way of thinking and writing. So it means that although we don't have really any natural resources, except for water, um, which could be a, a more important one going forward in the world. We, we don't have oil and gas and all those things, it, but we have people who can write and who can think. I think that is going to be very important moving forward in the world and for the EOS because there's just a lot of bright people here. And a lot of international people come in, of course, as well, because the jobs are here with all the big fintechs. It's true. Yeah, I've been to um, I've been to Dublin several times, actually. Uh, a lot of family events and weddings. Not, not in the last while, but I do hope to make way okay. up there again. Um, but yeah, yeah. Dublin's nice. Dublin's a nice city. It's small, bustling. It it's, is. Uh, it's very intimate in, in many ways. You know, It's kind of fun. It's friendly. Fantastic food. Um, mm-hmm. and fantastic drinks, of course. Yeah. Home of Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's neither here nor there. I think... Um, I just I think that you're you're bang on when you talk about like the IT industry over there has absolutely exploded and that was um, a large part of of kind of Ireland's workforce for a long time and, and it has been growing and absolutely geostratic political location um, of course politically Ireland is very uh, safe and well governed and um, yeah, I think it's important to distribute a vote kind of throughout the different continents for exactly a lot of the same reasons that you had mentioned before yeah what, what would you say something might be that maybe people don't know about EOS Dublin, if there was kind of like... Well, I was thinking about that. I said, sure, but they not know. I mean, do they know that we do a podcast now every Monday? Is that, they might know that, whatever. That's kind of fun. I've only started that, I've done like uh, six or seven so far. Ignite. But, but, ignition. Pardon? It's the Ignition it's podcast? Ignition. Yeah, 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 that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And then um, they do a lot of training. They've got, they've got a lot of courses up there, free courses. So they put a lot of emphasis on educating the community. And um, we're all going to a party next Wednesday week because, can I, can I, be, can I be very boastful? Dum, 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 roll. <laughs> I for uh, Woman of the Year in IT in Ireland. And uh, Sheree has very kindly, you know, uh, subbed the, some, some tickets because they were very expensive. So that's what we're going to be Thursday week. So that's, that's what EOS is doing. We're being, yeah. That's, that's huge. I love it. Um, and you, you know, it's well deserved. I've, I, I, since we started talking, of course, I've been following a lot of your stuff and watching a lot of your stuff. And I just, I'm really, I'm always impressed with the quality of your work. And um, well, I love writing. I must say, I, I love, love writing is what gives me. Even when I write a nice email, I might read it again and again and again. Ooh, look, I'm that. But long form writing, it's just, I mean, it's very exhausting. It's very tiring. When you finish, you go. When you read it again, you go, oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I know you're not meant to. Oh, that's lovely. I like that. <laughs> yeah. When I was in uni, actually, um, my I, I spent a lot of time doing uh, English classes and writing classes. And it's a shame because I haven't really kept it up. But I always felt that to really write a good piece, like this was just kind of my thing. I don't know if you can agree. I need to look at it over the series. I need to write it and kind of establish a baseline. And then I needed to look at it when I was in like four or five different moods, like if I was annoyed, I had to go and I had to look at it and I had to maybe change some things. And then when I was elated, I had to look at it and I had to change some things. And if I was kind of like feeling a little bit more analytical and I would just, I would write it. I was, I would always have it done early and then I would go over the course of like two or three days in various moods and then kind of add things to it and then just kind of get it to that finalized piece. I always felt like my best work was done when I really spent time in different areas of my brain. Does that sort of make sense or is that crazy? It does. I, I don't write like that, but I admire you um, for that. And it actually sounds a really good way. If I was advising a young person, I would say do it your way, not my way. But um, I, yeah, I, I, I tend to be impatient. So yeah. I interview and then... <laughs> 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 I look up for like three hours, you know? <laughs> Okay, okay. And then I'll, I'll read it through, but I'm kind of done then. You know, I've, I've, I've you know, spewed everything into the paper and that, that's it, or into the laptop. That's, that's, I'm done, you know. I have a very good editor, of course, who picks up anything that's, that's, that's wrong or whatever, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm very well. Yeah, well, your, your stuff is fantastic. You're a far better writer than I could ever hope to be. So obviously, uh, this it works. It, it's a learning curve. I'm learning, learning all the time. And also, I'm learning, just as you said, at the very start. 
there's so much stuff to learn. I've never worked harder and learned more than I have in the last year and a half. And excited to it. It's not a chore. I'm like, my brain hurts. I go to bed at night time, I go, oh, my brain hurts. Yeah. Wish I had more brain power because all my repping too is that when you put lots of stuff in, some of it kind of seeps out the back. <laughs> so I really? forget it. I really- <laughs> Are you, you going to sweat it out or is it going to just like, is it going to come out your ear when you're... I don't know. It just trickles out, I think. I just leave yeah. it in the <laughs> so, knowledge behind me. I'm going to start wearing earplugs. It's kind of funny because to go back to your conversation about um, Thomas Cox being a generalist, I think that you almost have to in this industry. I mean, you need to know it's something about politics, finance, you know, math, you know, politics, socioeconomic behavior, the people's perception, marketing, there's just so many different things that you, you really have to have kind of a decent grasp on to progress. So I just think that that's so, it's funny you said that because I think everybody in the crypto space has to be a generalist because you just have to inhale information nonstop to really keep up. And right, you're right. It is, and the pace of change is so fast. It's not, and you can see someone else and go, go oh, oh, I haven't heard all that. Oh, I didn't know about that. And some of it like, again, like Thomas, he brought in stuff from you know like traditional uh, spheres and disciplines but so much new stuff coming up from this side is like oh wow very interesting yeah no, I, I, I actually must quote, I must quote him. he said well the last thing he said was if you're bored then you're not paying attention <laughs> that's so good isn't that brilliant that is brilliant i love it oh, yeah oh. yeah he every time i speak to him i feel like i don't read enough and i don't oh, for I sure do. for sure it needs it yeah. <laughs> um, just to kind of circle back to EOS Dublin one more time, what are what would you say kind of some of the core values of EOS Dublin are? Like, what are some of the things that really EOS Dublin believes in in terms of kind of ethics and, and just overall modus operandi? Well, I have to say, Sharif and Sam, who are the core the core team, core directors, are yeah. one of the some of the nicest. It's just a bad word to use, I mean, nice to say, but one of the best guys. They are just they're just solid. I met them the first time at a uh, um, uh, sort of semi-formal blockchain meeting with the government bodies on it and stuff like that. And I had just done my brain dump on my my, my story, like all that stuff, whatever, and, and why I love blockchain. And they came to me after and they said, we want you to come and work with us. I said, really? Said, yes, we want you to be the first board member of the And I said, really? I said, yeah. And it's, it's been, they're such that they are very passionate about EOS. Yeah. They they are considered gentlemen. You know, they're not r- rushing or risky or whatever. They they believe in, in building uh, uh, not in a rush. You know, they're very solid. But everything that they do, all the stuff they, they, they produce, they give me like the best job in the world. Too. <laughs> so let me try the best job in the world in all the people because a lot of the EOS uh, products I've been interviewing, they're fascinating. Yeah. You know, I've never known other other you know. Projects on Ethereum, whatever, are interesting, or other, other platforms too as well. But some of the EOS ones, like you introduced me to Greg Simpson from uh, Edna. Wow, wow, that's amazing. I'm gonna, I, I want, I'm getting a, a DNA tattoo. Yeah. I go, yes. Um, I put my kids' names on it. So they're very solid. They're not flighty. They want to educate. They're very, they're full of integrity. They're not, they don't cut corners. Um, and they're just very genuine. Men, I think, and the whole group, and that you know, they're just they're measured. Maybe that measured. Yeah, that's probably a good word for them. Word. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I noticed that as well. Um, I think that you have to be like that. You have to be, you know, like everything in crypto just moves so fast, and you need to really be successful. You need to, you need to be able to adapt and move quickly, but you also need to be able to step back, kind of, you know, out of the shadows a little bit, and just really assess the space before proceeding. Because it's also easy to. Um, Mess a lot of things up in a hurry mm-hmm. because of the speed at which the space the space travels. Yeah, measured. I mean, I I, I trust them. Isn't that it? I trust them. Yeah, that, that's a very strong thing because I trust their judgment and their their skill sets and their work ethic and all, all that kind of stuff. It's, and they they allow me to love the interviews. So For I'm sure. Happy. I know. I know. Also, um, EOS Dublin is kind of going to be one of the block producers for Warbly. Um, I wanted to get your opinion. Kind of, what do you think of Warbly? I, of course, I don't need to say it again. Everybody knows I'm excited about Warbly. Yeah, you know, they're probably sick of me talking about Warbly, but I, I love the project. I love the prospects that it brings, and I just think it's a fascinating, a fascinating. You know, one thing that I mean, the whole concept is great, right? Because it's the financial district of EOS, right? And it's very clever. You get your KYC, 
done yeah. and go on and everybody can, can work and do whatever they want to do. It makes it much easier. But one thing that, that, that people probably don't know about them, the team that's working on Warbly, I mean, every um, Monday night at 11 o'clock, I'm, I'm like this, I'm like, I'm like the one in the corner, fast asleep on but they all come together. That is very powerful. There's very few other groups that actually think just have that, you know, and there's, there's also no, the one, of course, on the Sunday night, too, is the PR. My nights, my weekend's ruined now. You're like, I can't grasp the time. But um, I, I like the work ethic and the thinking behind it. And there's a lot of very, again, it's, it's measured as well, isn't it? It's, it's not, not crazy stuff. It's like, we're doing this, and then we're doing this. And that, you know, that's very much Dominic. Dominic is very process-led very solid man again he's a businessman he's not he, I mean he, he he can go off on a deep end about the banks and financial you know uh, misbehavior and all the rest of it you know he, he can have a, a, as much of a rant as a raid that I would have but he's very measured in his business and I like that too as well because you know, it's a very it's a safe pair of hands of steering the ship yeah that's I, I had the pleasure and the opportunity to speak to Dominic a lot and um, on camera Dominic is very Mr. Business, but he behind the scenes is just very intelligent, mm. spirited, funny man. And I think a lot of people don't know that about him. That that um, when he's not on camera, he has he's very sharp, and he has one of the best senses, probably the best sense of humor of anybody that I've spoken to in the blockchain. And just to hear him talk, yeah. I'm often I'm often laughing a lot. He's very he's intelligent, and um, you're right. He's good to have at the home and. Mm. Also quite funny. I don't think people know that, but um, hopefully well, in time. We had a conversation, a divorce conversation that Dominic and I were having, and then I said, you were on it, it, it too as well. And so he went, oh, Mitch, are we, are we making you cynical now or something? <laughs> are you have a girlfriend? Are we? <laughs> I felt a bit like, you know, yes, married is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is, but I just, we were having, just, we were having a sort of funny conversation that only two divorcees can have, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, the team's great. I love them. Love the projects. I don't think people don't realize what they're actually in the midst of accomplishing. Um, and I hope it's to be a part of it. Big project. Yeah. It's happening. It's happening. That's the thing. It's It's happening. It is happening. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll move on to the next thing. I could talk horribly all day, but I won't. We're here to talk about you and we're here to talk about EOS Dublin. Um, what do you think some of the struggles are that we face kind of with adoption of blockchain? In general? Yeah, in general. Well, two things i think one is the media that like the the traditional media is very slow to get on board i know this because i'm a member of the nuj the national Union journalist union here and we there's been two forms of four every six months and i've been i almost been shouting at, at the, the guy who leads him let me talk about blockchain please because I said, there's two things going on one there is work if you're a freelance journalist it's very hard to get work from the big broadsheets or the tabloids it's very hard to break in there yeah. Lots of journalists come to people who want to write, and it's so hard for them to get paid work. I'm like, there's a lot of paid work in this space. Whether you work directly for a company or you're working for one of the new sites, there's a lot of opportunity to get out here. Finally, after nearly a year, a year and a half, he, he said he'd let me speak at the next one. I'm like, of course you should, because you should be supporting freelance writers getting access to paid work. So the, the media, the traditional media is very slow. They think it's a Ponzi scheme. I've had quite a few conversations with the group head of the mail papers. You know, the Daily Mail, the UK group, but we have the Irish version here. Nice man. He won't let me write anything about crypto. He says, it's a Ponzi scheme. Can we go about the kind of blockchain thing, please? So that is very funny. So the big thing is education that the um, media is not telling us. And people who you think should have a responsibility to educate ordinary people who maybe don't have access to mad blockchain friends that are there should be more, should be more emphasis on that. And then, secondly, the other hard thing, which I think is just, it's just, it's the, 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 the difficulty of getting your wallets and your, you know, transferring money. It's not, no one's made it easy yet. And I think we're waiting for that to happen for some solution, just to make it much easier rather than, you know, your big, huge, long pins and then being told you'll lose it, you'll lose it forever. You know, I think once that sort of scare stuff is, is finished, then it'll be, it'll be easier. Yeah, and I think um, exchange hacks have a lot to do with it as well, and that kind of feeds the fear. And the irony is, is that while the bankers are, you know, saying negative things about electronic assets, they're buying them up in the background. But, I mean, like you know, who was speaking to recently reminded me that the EU passed a law three years ago. And this is when it affects the EU, which yeah. forbids bailouts, but it allows for bail-ins. And bail-ins is what happened in Cyprus in 2020, 2012. 
when the government had a, a, a deficit and it creamed off all the deposits over 100,000, just took the money. Took the money. That's fair. So you mean, you know, it's, it's man, don't get me started on the banks. <laughs> no, I won't. I will not because I can go all day too. Okay. Uh, my, my hair will stand on end. <laughs> Where's the future? Where are we headed, Jillian? What do you think? Like, I mean, you're not a fortune teller, obviously, but what does your intuition kind of tell you? Well, I feel so much more happy, happier than a couple of years ago before I met blockchain. Because yeah. I'm looking again, I mentioned the uh, Oxfam report, I'm going, how do we change this inequalities? How, how do we change it? And I know personally, because I would have traditionally come from a very, um, I, I hate for a privileged background. You know, I went to private education, went to Trinity, first up Jason Morgan. So, you know, I had a lot of doors open for me and I didn't even know it. Now, I worked very hard and I would have put it down to my own hard work, whatever. But actually, a lot of doors open for me purely by who I was and where I was and who I met. And who I, I had a lot of doors open for me that, that, would, that wouldn't have otherwise. And then in the last 10 years, I discovered those, those, it took me 10 years to turn the corner around just to get out of my particular job. I thought, well, it's hard for me. How much harder is it for somebody who has no privilege whatsoever? And then you go on thinking, okay, so if the middle classes are being, you know, sort of wiped down and squished, whatever, what, what chance the world? So now I'm thinking with blockchain, and I know I get very, I, I will start to cry soon, but I see an amazing world coming up because we can change the world. Yeah. That is so powerful. We can change the world. And ordinary people can do extraordinary things. And it, it's a success where we can earn our livings. We can, and it's just, it's supposed to be interesting again, you know, not Trump like and fake news and whatever. It's supposed to be interesting. And, Engage, and so I, I'm. I'm more hopeful about the new world than I have been any time. When I was 16, I remember I asked my mom, "Is the world a getting faster and b getting worse or better?" And my mom said, "It's definitely getting faster," and she was a bit uncertain about whether the world is getting better or not. And yeah. I think in the last little while before black blockchain, I would have said, "I'm not very happy with the way the world is going. You know, climate change, all this uh, horrible, you know, injustices, refugees, wars, all those things." And I know people say. Uh, it's better now than it has been in many years. We know more about it. Perhaps. I don't know. But I didn't like the way it was going. And now I think with blockchain, that whole abundance thing, changing the world, making it better, I, I think I'm much more hopeful, much more hopeful for the world. I agree. Will, will fiat ever cease to exist? Yes. Yes. Of so. <laughs> okay. Because they have so messed it up. You know, it's like, I mean, like quantitative easing, Bretton Woods, Nixon decoupling from the gold standard. And these are all false concepts about money. You know, they actually, I mean, I interviewed somebody recently, um, Mount uh, uh, per per Perlin, um, it's a bank that they're setting up in Switzerland, but it's going to be 100% reserve. So you put your money into the bank on deposit, they will leave it there on deposit. Can you imagine that? So that if everybody, and that's how bank runs happen, everybody goes and asks for the deposit, and the bank can't return it all because they've chopped it up, all that fractional reserve lending rule up. This is a bank going to be 100% reserve. That's interesting, isn't it? I thought, what was the question again? <laughs> I wobbled into something else there. <laughs> anyway, no, no. Fiat money, fiat money. I, I actually think fiat money, because at the moment, it's not being controlled. It's being controlled by, by lobbyists and by individuals and by banks. and by. It's not controlled by the common good, whatever that is being controlled. But there's, you know, people, there's, there's no consensus around it. So, Bankers do what they do, you know. There's a reason why they call that. Yeah, it's so true. Why? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit here. I like to do that, but this is a this is a really great conversation. I, I think we should definitely do this again sometime soon. But I want to know, um, just kind of going back to Yost Dublin because I know you are kind of a representative of Yost Dublin, and I want to give you an opportunity to talk to everybody in the Yost community and just kind of say why should people. I mean, of course, we talked about geostratic location, um, safe political zone, uh, the fact that Sharif has been ingrained in the community for a long time, he's doing some education. Why should people vote for Yas Dublin? I think those are pretty good reasons, but is there anything else maybe you wanted to highlight about Yas Dublin? Um, so I can get a pay rise? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, more money! Oh, Jillian. <laughs> <laughs> I think if they were voted up, I mean, they're doing quite well, but if they, were, if they had more votes, They've been a very, they've been a very solid citizen, you know, with the EOS community. I think that you need people who are just solid citizens who care. Again, you know, I was speaking to, I said to Katie Ronan, aka Leah Peterson from EOS Asia, yeah. and I'm at their website. Oh, we will, you know, 
and then Shinyu and Ibu tried to kill the EOS community. So there was a lot of fighting talk at the start, and that's what's happening now. We're going, we're going to make this work. We're going to make it to be a community that is uh, it's women friendly. That is for sure. The, there's more women in EOS and other other chains. Agreed. And it's very empathetic. There's a lot of creatives in this area. It's not just technology led projects. There's a lot of creative people working in this area. So you know, and Sharif and EOS Dublin is that's a solid. He's a good citizen. I would vote for him. I think that's a pretty good explanation. Um, and yeah, I've watched I've watched EOS Dublin for a long time. My fascination, of course, having my Irish heritage. But, um, you know, it's been it's been interesting, and it's it's great to see that he's going to be working with Warbly again. Another project that I'm you know, and you're going to be working with Warbly, and maybe we can do yeah. some sort of, um, media collaborations in the future and that kind of thing. Um, I just. I don't. I have so many questions I want to talk to you about, and so many questions I want to ask. But of course, I don't want to run this on for multiple hours on end. Um, I do, however, want you to talk and just kind of plug your your podcast. If people want to watch Jillian Godsell, of course, I've watched the Crypto Divas and I've watched Ignition podcasts. Where can they find you? Where they, where can they reach out to you? Where can they find your shows? I'll list all the links, of course, below as always. But I just think you're you're phenomenal in these things, and I think you have a lot of really interesting things to say, and you speak to a lot of really great people. Wow! Can I put you on my CV? <laughs> That's very of kind of you. Um, well, this, this, I do quite a few things. You're right. I do um, crypto divas. Now we we've been a little bit lax because Lena, my Lena, uh, last Wilson is from Estonia. Yeah. And we've both been moving house the last couple of weeks. We are both at the same time. So we're going to get together again on Sunday. We do it on a Sunday. And I write up something. And I, uh, you can see it on Crypto Divas on YouTube. And then I, I usually run it in Irish tech news as well. So you can have a bit of a blurb from the fun stuff. And that's a space. We have a chit-chat about what's happened in crypto during the kind of fun. With the EOS podcast, I get into really interesting people. And um, I get to talk to amazing people. So that's just kind of fun. It's about a 20-minute piece. And um, it goes up every Monday. Every Monday, there's a, 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 a version. And then I, with blockleaders.io, it's not the long form writing piece that I do, where I interview block leaders. That is so exciting. We're, that's growing organically. You know, we're not, we're not, um, like, you know, how people that they do use growth hacking and all the rest. That's fine. It has, has a purpose. But here, we're just, we're not, we're not advertising so far. Um, David Atkinson from Polychain actually is the, uh, the founder behind and co founder myself and Alison Lavoie. So he's funding it. But it's, and we're paying proper money to journalists, which is nice because journalists get screwed over all the time and are right for the profile there. So that's, that's, that's interesting. And there's a great bunch of writers. And so that's what, that's what those things. But I also, if people are really very interested, I also have a show on Dublin City FM on a Monday at 11. And that's all about people making a difference. It's a half hour thing. You can get it on the SoundCloud with Dublin City FM afterwards because unless you're in Dublin, you're not interested. And then tomorrow morning, I have an East Coast FM show, a radio show. Which you have to, you can download the East Coast FM app. You can listen live, but it's eleven, it's nine to ten on a Saturday morning, so you could be asleep or something like that. So those, those, those are my, my most sort of moving parts, high profile stuff that I do. I can, my Friday nights are ruined because I'll be what time is it now? It's half six or seven. I'll be going to bed about ten. <laughs> I'll be up at six, go to break. Like, I want you. Like, so I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to send me all those links because for anybody who is doubting me, like. Um, I have a lot of respect for anybody who's doing, you know, what we're doing, or there's a lot of people who've been doing it a lot longer than I have. There's a lot of people who do it a lot better than I have or do. Um, but at the same time, Jillian, like your long form writing is amazing. Your interviews are always very, uh, very, very interesting. Just the way that you pose your questions, um, and some of the, some of the engagement that you have, I were to say, if I respect somebody the most in the EOS space, and this is not to say that I don't love everybody else because there's some really, really good people in the EOS space, but if I were to respect somebody's journalism in the EOS space, if I had to choose um, one person who I, I said was absolutely bang on with their stuff, I would say that that is you, and that's not just me blowing smoke. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do. I know the community does as well, so please send me all your links. I'm going to put them below here on this, as well as everything to EOS Dublin, who I think that everybody should really um, go and check out. They also have a telegram, which I'm going to post below. Get involved with EOS Dublin. Uh, Sharif is a great guy. You are a great representative, of course, for EOS Dublin. And Jillian, it's just been a pleasure to sit down with you and chat a little bit, and I really hope that we can do it again sometime soon. Oh, listen, I could listen to you all day, <laughs> especially when you say nice things about me. <laughs> You're very kind, more than kind. I don't deserve it all, but thank you. You, thank you, you. Do, you do deserve it all. I mean it. Everybody should go check out Jillian. I'm going to post links below. She's a talent and um, an absolute yeah. pleasure. Well, do you know what I can say? I'm so lucky. 
that I have landed in a place in my life, in my career, where I'm doing the things that I want to do with amazing people and huge topics and fantastic projects and exciting changing the world type stuff. Yeah. You know, how, no, of course I'm going to shine. Everyone's going to shine when you have all those, you're ticking all those boxes. It's just like, wow, it's like green existence. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And for anybody else out there who's thinking about making a podcast or thinking about making a movie or thinking about doing a radio show, um, I just want to say that, like, I've never considered myself in competition with anybody. The more journalists that we have in this space, the better, and everybody starts somewhere. Like, I've still got a long way to develop, but if you were to look at some of my earlier videos, and I dare somebody to, they're laughable. It's like me speaking on a GoPro with, like, you know, kind of, like, unshaven and grizzly and slamming a coffee with my dog. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're the collector's items. Yeah, they really, they're terrible. And I leave them there. And I leave them there not only um, as a reminder to myself, you know, of how far I've come because of some of the opportunities that have been given, but also to a reminder to other people that um, everybody starts somewhere. And um, in the space, there's a lot, of, a lot of opportunity. So if you have the drive and you want to do something that's, you know, kind of along the lines of what you're speaking with, speaking about transformative and rewarding, then um, I encourage everybody to make videos, try doing a podcast. Um, well, you're dead right, because the more videos we make, the more we can tell people about this amazing industry and what opportunities lie there for people. So I think that you're dead right. That's it. Everybody should go out and make some videos and write some stuff. Agreed. Thank you so much once again, Jillian. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to Thank chatting you. with you soon. Bye-bye.